The Littlest Christmas Elf by Nancy Buss, illustrated by Terry Super. Alistair the Elf was excited. Today he was leaving for the North Pole. The whole village of Elf and Corners had come to say goodbye. Even the mayor was here. This year Santa has sent for our merriest elf to join his workshop, the mayor said. We will miss Alistair's songs and stories, yet Santa needs the best, and Alistair is a very special elf. But when Alistair arrived at the North Pole, he didn't feel special at all. He was the littlest elf there. He was so tiny that the head elf, McCafferty, couldn't even find him a job. McCafferty gave Alistair a wagon bill, but Alistair was too small to hammer. He gave him a dollhouse to paint, but Alistair couldn't reach the roof. He gave him some bears to stuff, but that didn't work either. He's buried beneath them, said the elf in charge of the bears. McCafferty sh shook his head. Just two weeks until Christmas and we still have so much to do. We have to find you a job. Perhaps you can sweep. But even the broom was too big for Alistair, and the other elves began to laugh. Why, he's just a runt! said one elf. He poked a friend and giggled. He's smaller than I am, said another who stuck his tongue out. And absolutely useless, said a third. Santa should send him away. Alistair blink, blinks his eyes quickly so he wouldn't cry. I don't belong here, he thought. I'm so little, even Santa won't like me. Then he pushed through the crowd and ran from the room. But Santa won't send me away, said Alistair, because he will never see me. Alistair kept running until he found a perfect place to hide, down behind the woodpile in the back of the reindeer pen. It was there that Alistair found a friend. My name is Nicholas, said an old elf, peering over the woodpile. What's yours? Alistair answered in a whisper. Nicholas shook his hand. I'm glad to know you, he said. Would you like to help me with the reindeer? When Alistair nodded, Nicholas lifted him up to his shoulders. The two of them chatted and sang while they fed and watered the reindeer. Alistair was so happy to find a friend that he returned to the reindeer pen the next day and the next. Nicholas never minded if Alistair asked questions and never told Alistair he was too small to help. When Nicholas, While Nicholas cleaned out the stalls, Alistair fed the reindeer's apples. While Nicholas brushed the reindeer's coat, Alistair harnessed, polished the harness bells. All the while, he told Nicholas stories, and together they sang to the reindeer. But one morning, Nicholas was gone. Someone else was hauling the water. Someone else was cleaning the pen. Where's Nicholas? Alistair asked. Nicholas, indeed, said a grumpy elf who was busily swinging a pitchfork. He's up at the big house. Now go away. I have work to do. The big house, thought Alistair. But that's where Santa lives. Nicholas must be sick. He must be very sick if he's staying with Santa. And the thought of his friend in that big, scary house sent Alistair scurrying home to the safety of his bed. But he didn't sleep. He was worried about Nicholas, and he missed him so much. He knew he'd have to see him. So the next morning, Alistair passed, packed a basket of fruit and started out for a visit. But the nearer he got to Santa's house, the slower his steps became. Finally, he stopped completely behind a Christmas tree in Santa's front yard. His heart was beating loudly. Suddenly, the door opened, and Alistair, more frightened than ever, dived beneath the pine tree. He heard footsteps. He buried his head under his arms. The footsteps came closer. Alistair was afraid to breathe. He closed his eyes tightly and prayed that no one would see him. But someone jiggled his foot. 
Hey there, said a voice. You're not hurt, are you? Alistair let out a long, slow breath. He peeked out from under his arms. It was Nicholas! Alistair hurried, scurried from under the tree and gave his friend a hug. Well, it's Alistair. I missed you. And how are my reindeer? The week before Christmas is so busy, I don't have time to take care of them. Come inside and talk to me. And before Alistair could say a word, his friend had hoisted him to his shoulders and began walking toward the house. No, no, Alistair cried. I can't go in there. Put me down. And he wiggled and squirmed so much that the old elf did. Can't go in where? asked Nicholas. Alistair pointed to the house. And why not, may I ask? Because Santa won't like me, and he'll send me home. Why would he do that, asked Nicholas. Because I'm little and I can't do anything right. The old elf interrupted. Why, that's nonsense, he said. You're a big help to me. In fact, I have a special job just for you. A special job, asked Alistair. For me? That's exactly right, said Nicholas. You're coming with me this year when I make my deliveries. Deliveries? said Alistair. The toys. The toys to the children on Christmas Eve, said Nicholas. You see, it's a long trip and I get lonely. But you could come with me, Alistair. You're so small, you'll fit in the sleigh. And you could tell me stories and we could sing songs just like we do in the reindeer pen. Alistair's mouth dropped open. His eyes got big and round. Then you're Santa Claus, his friend bowed, also known as St. Nicholas. Alistair began to back away. Then he stopped and grinned. But I'm not afraid of you. I'm glad, said the old elf. Will you come with me on Christmas Eve? Oh, yes, said Alistair. That's exactly what he did. It was the best Christmas Eve Alistair or Santa ever had.